Thank you for joining us today for Cape Chronicle. I'm Audrey Kane. Today we'll be talking about some exciting tourism events and programs in Cape Girardeau. We'll visit with Cape Girardeau's regional airport manager Bruce Loy about the May 11th air show and also we'll be joined by Parks and Recreation Director Julia Thompson. We'll be asking her about the new sports, the indoor sports complex under construction and how it's going to change the way we do winter sports. Plus, the new executive director of Cape Girardeau's Visitors Bureau, Brenda Newburn, will share some information about her new role with the Visitors Bureau and also what's on the horizon at the CVB. That's all ahead on Cape Chronicle. Whether it's for business or just a getaway, Cape Air is your wings in the Midwest. Cape Air serves six destinations, including Kirksville, Quincy, Fort Leonard Wood, Cape Girardeau, Marion, and Owensboro. Fly from Cape Girardeau to St. Louis with fares starting at just $49 each way. With easy connections through Lambert St. Louis International Airport, Cape Air connects you to the Midwest and the world. Book today at capeair.com or call 800 Cape Air and enjoy the ride. Welcome to Cape Chronicle, I'm Audrey Kane. We hear the Canadian snowbirds are coming back to Cape Girardeau again this year. There will be a special appearance and a dedication time to honor our veterans and heroes. Bruce Loy is here to talk about the event. Thank you for coming, Bruce. You're welcome, great well, to this, be here. This is very exciting. Um, we should be, should be excited about the air show. Well, tell us about the snowbirds and some of the other special events. Well, you know, we were fortunate very fortunate in 2014 to be able to have the Canadian Snowbird Jet Team, which is of course the Canadian equivalent to our Blue Angels or our Air Force Thunderbirds. And uh, I, I was so happy that we were able to see them in 14. And uh, we didn't do an air show in 15, but they were just excellent and we really love them. They're, they're great people and great guys to work with, guys and gals. Um, so getting ready for the International Council of Air Shows this year, which is a, the, the air show conference that we go to annually, um, just before, which is just a little bit before the first uh, week of December, uh, the Snowbirds gave me a call and asked if I'd be willing to do a midweek show, uh, which is a little unusual, but they do a lot of these up in Canada. I was very aware of that. Uh, they're in transition from Fort Lauderdale to St. Louis to do a show in Spirit uh, Airport in St. Louis and said, We'd like to come by. You mind if we stop there on Tuesday and do a show for you on Wednesday? And I said, well, let me think about it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, so it was a, a pretty quick decision to be able to make. And we are just absolutely thrilled to death and that to have them here. And the, the great thing that happened at the conference was that we were also able to speak to the entire Canadian group and find out that the Canadian F-18 demonstration, which is the fighter jet demonstration, was also going to be uh, on its way from Fort Lauderdale to St. Louis. Wow. So I said, well, you know, he's got to fly right over the airport. There's no reason why we shouldn't be able to see them. And uh, we, we talked and uh, I said, absolutely, we'd love to drop in and, and uh, do a show for you along after the Snowbirds and uh, uh, on the same day, obviously. Uh, but we'd love to do that as well. So we were very lucky to have two of the Canadian assets, uh, military assets. And uh, the story goes on, however, um, we were approached by the Canadian Army Parachute Team, which is the name of their name is the Canadian Skyhawks. And uh, just uh, actually today, I uh, got the call and, and found out that they are able to also uh, attend our show. So you don't see this very often uh, at all to be able to have all three Canadian military assets uh, at, at your air show. And we're just thrilled to death. You know, it, the fact that Cape Girardeau was essentially founded by a French Canadian, it, it, it just adds to the pleasure and, and the fun that, that to have these guys here. That's, that is a really big coup for a small community like ours to have all three of those at the same time. That's fantastic. It, you must be pretty excited about it, it yourself. It, it really is. I had some other entertainers, to, performers tell me, I wouldn't let that get out very far. There's going to be some other air shows that are going to be really upset with you. So <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's their too problem. bad for them. <laughs> well, um, in addition to 
us some of those. What are some of the other things that people will be able to do at the air show? Since it's midweek and not weekend, what, is that going to change the hours? It changes the hours a lot. It does change things, and I'm glad you asked because, uh, you know, we will be opening the gates at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, because the Canadian jet team has, the, the snowbirds have to have certain daylight uh, rules and, uh, you know, the, the glare from the sun setting is a problem for them, we are going to be launching them uh, around 6 o'clock. Now, the show will start at 5.30. Uh, we'll have our opening ceremonies at 5.30, so I ask everybody to get off work and, and really hurry out to the airport. Um, but we won't launch them until 6 o'clock, and then they will actually what we call smoke on. Uh, they will actually start their demonstration about 6.10. And, and uh, beyond that, of course, the schedule could change. But that's the one thing that I had to guarantee them would be firm uh, in order for us to get their full show. Okay, so the date of the show is? May 11th. It's Wednesday, May 11th, 2016, of course. Just uh, coming up any really very soon. And uh, uh, so you have the, the Snowbirds. Uh, and as I already mentioned, we have the, uh, the Canadian F-18 demonstration. We have the Canadian Skyhawks. We've also invited back the uh, U.S. Army uh, Golden Knight parachute team. So we'll have both, both parachute teams. And we, have, again, are very fortunate. From the Air Force contacted us, and we are going to see the Heritage flight for the, uh, na the, excuse me, the Air Force F-22 flying uh, along with the old and the new with the uh, P-51 Mustang. Uh, we are often privileged to get this heritage flight, and it kind of is a, it's a reflection of the old military with the new military, and the F-22 is, of course, one of the newer jets that we have uh, in the United States military powers, if you will. Uh, so we're really happy to, to have them here a, as well. Now, one of the other questions that people will always ask is, how much are the tickets going to be for the event? Well, that's, that's the thrilling part about this show. The city and myself have decided that this will be a free show for the general public, so we're expecting a really large crowd. Uh, and like I say, come out quick, get your seats. If you'd like to have a VIP experience, you will be able to buy those tickets uh, either online at capegirardoairfestival.com um, or, of course, you can call our office, which the number for that is 573-334-6230. Uh, well, what would a VIP experience include? That will include the ability to have a frontline seat. You have a reserve seat. Uh, we'll have a meal, and you'll have free, uh, free beverages throughout the, uh, throughout the show. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, VIP parking as well. So it's it's a uh, it's a great event. It's a good experience. Now, parking is is that ever an issue at the Cape Girardeau Airport for shows? It's normally not. Uh, when we have a, expect a crowd like this, we are we are hoping to set up busing like we did in 2014. It worked very very well. Where p people normally park on the outskirts, we have several lots that uh, local uh, businesses have allowed us to use and then we bus in uh, to the air show from there. Of course, if you've got a VIP pass, you would just come right on into the airport and uh, we'll have a special parking uh, space for VIP parking. Well, and that's so exciting that it's free to the general public uh, for the normal uh, admission. Are there anything, is there anything that we should anticipate happening between sure. now and the show that we should watch for or? Well, keep an eye out. We are hoping to have at least one event Tuesday. Uh, you know, we're, we're trying to get one of the uh, uh, parachute teams to, to help us out and, and uh, have an event somewhere nearby. Uh, that's got to be ironed out yet, yeah, but keep in mind for that Tuesday that everything here will be free. Uh, and, and of course, we'll be having doing helicopter rides uh, Wednesday, we'll be selling helicopter rides Wednesday prior to the show and perhaps even on Tuesday as well. Um, but all those details will come. If you just come to our, uh, look up our website, all that information is going to be there and, and we'll be thrilled to have everybody there. I should mention we also have a couple of civilian acts, uh, Redline Air Shows, which is a two ship team. They do a day and night show. This is going to transverse on into the night. Uh, and it'll start with an F-18 Twilight show, which is, is going to be phenomenal. You don't get to see an F-18 fly at twilight. Oh, that's uh, going to be so much fun. May 11th May for 11. that air show at the Cape Girardeau Regional Airport. Well, thank you so You're much for welcome. coming thank by, you. Bruce Loy. We've been talking with Bruce Loy, Regional Airport Manager. And on the way next, we'll hear about how parks and recreation is changing Cape Girardeau's winter. That's next on Cape, Cape Chronicle. Whether it's for business or just a getaway, Cape Air is your wings in the Midwest.
Cape Air serves six destinations, including Kirksville, Quincy, Fort Leonard Wood, Cape Girardeau, Marion, and Owensboro. Fly from Cape Girardeau to St. Louis with fares starting at just $49 each way. With easy connections through Lambert St. Louis International Airport, Cape Air connects you to the Midwest and the world. Book today at capebear.com or call 800 Cape Air and enjoy the ride. My daddy says that we need to be prepared in case of emergency. Sometimes scary things can happen, like an earthquake or even just a bad storm. That can make a lot of people scared or hurt. If a lot of people get scared or hurt, it can take a long time before rescuers can get to us. But my daddy volunteers for CERT. He says that being prepared isn't just about us, but everyone in our community. He works with other volunteers in our neighborhood to make sure everyone is okay. Like Mrs. Johnston next door. She lets me play with her cats. If anyone is hurt or needs help, he can help them to a safe place, which saves the ambulance a lot of time when it comes to pick them up. Daddy says that CERT helps him learn a lot about helping us stay safe in a disaster. And there's even fun supplies we can use. I'm glad my daddy volunteers for CERT and helps people. And when bad things happen, I'm not scared because we're prepared. Welcome back to Cape Chronicle. I'm Audrey Kane. Cape Girardeau knows how to do sports. And with summer, spring, and fall, we always have a lot going on with the different sports and area activities. But winter is when tourism is not as active. But with a new sportsplex, some folks are about to change that. Here to talk about that indoor sports complex is Parks and Recreation Director Julia Thompson. Julia, thanks again for being on the show. Hi, Audrey. Thanks for having me. Well, we're excited because uh, this indoor sports complex is going to be very different. What do you think is special about it? Because some some people think, well, we already have the Osage Center. We do stuff indoors there. What's going to be different right, about it? Right. Well, the Osage Center is really more of a community center, community recreation center, uh, where we do a variety of different activities. The indoor sports complex is 120,000 square feet under roof. It's the biggest thing that we have in our inventory, and it's all focused on sports and attracting events uh, to Cape Girardeau to enhance the uh, tourism times, especially during the winter months. Okay, so when you say sports, what kind of sports and who will play these sports? Right. Well, it's maybe it's a, a important to think about the building in three different aspects. On the uh, western side of the building will be two indoor uh, turf soccer fields or turf fields because we'll also have drop down batting cages. You'll be able to do a variety of different turf programs, not just soccer. So say flag football, you could do marching band practice. Um, so that takes up a large segment of the building is two indoor soccer fields. Uh, then you go to the middle section of the building, which is the lobby area where you'll have uh, restaurant capabilities, there'll be concessions, offices, meeting rooms, things of that nature. And then over on the other side is all hardwood courts, uh, basketball and volleyball. So you'll have six uh, basketball courts that are high school regulation that can convert to 12 uh, volleyball courts. That sounds huge. It's big. It's <laughs> very How many square feet did you say? Well, it's 120,000 square wow. feet. And if you can think of Osage, which most everybody's been to, uh, Osage is only 58,000 square feet. And that's a large building as well. Wow. So it's a, a double. So, yeah, actually more than twice yes. the size. Yes. And that is a very big building. So what's the connection um, as far as the indoor sports complex economically, the economic development and tourism, how did those connect to that indoor sports complex directly? Right. Well, what happened is the very same uh, funding source, which is our restaurant tax uh, that helped build facilities like the River Campus, mm -hmm. uh, there was an agreement made um, to uh, extend that restaurant tax all the way to 2030. And recently, uh, we did a facility uh, feasibility study over the last couple of years where there were four facilities that we had studied through a consultant. Uh, the city had appointed a committee to review that. The indoor sports complex was the one that uh, they chose after all of the um, information was back. 
uh, on the facility. The conference, the motel conference center was also one of those, and that's also being built. Uh, so two of the four facilities uh, will be open probably within the next year. But that's exactly what happened is um, because parks and recreation and sports is already big business here in the Cape, we are able to take this indoor uh, sports complex and where the hotel nights might be a little bit lower in the winter months, mm -hmm. um, this indoor sports complex will allow us to do much more and many events um, relating to sports, which they bring you know, the parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and hopefully fill up our hotel nights during say November through March, um, a little more than we have in the past. That is very, very exciting it for is. not just our area, but for our region in general. The that's region be is a critical. Bring people in from that normally would have to go to St. Louis for this type of an experience. It's, there's so. nothing like it in our area. That's fantastic. Well, okay, so there's another event because that's at least a year off before the indoor sports. We conference should be open opens. in about a year. Um, Friends of the Parks Day is another event. Tell us about that. One of my favorite events because it really signifies spring and uh, getting all of our parks ready for um, everybody being outside. So we're so happy because we partner with a lot of community groups and um, sponsors that help us buy plants. Uh, we beautify the parks. We uh, utilize it as what's called the Great Cape Cleanup, our uh, Keep Cape Beautiful Committee. Uh, actually comes out and uh, helps cook hot dogs for everybody uh, that gets out there. So we look for volunteers that are willing to spend just a couple of hours on a Saturday from say 9 to 11 and pick up litter, plant plants, trees, uh, spread mulch in our playgrounds, plant flowers, and just have some fun beautifying the community. And when is that? Um, did I miss you saying that? When I might not have said that. That's April 23rd, Saturday, April 23rd. April 23rd, mm -hmm. okay. And so if someone wanted to volunteer, do they need to sign up to do that? They don't have to. Um, they can let us know. That way we kind of keep track of you know, how many hot dogs and t-shirts we need to buy, but they don't have to. They can just show up that day. Okay, and so it's a Kappa Ha um, is where they'd register. Cap at Kappa Ha. Okay, mm -hmm. that's a, the, that was gotcha. an important one right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and speaking of Kappa Ha, some beautiful new facilities at Kappa Ha. Wow. It looks gorgeous, but Thank I saw you. some workmen out there the other day. Are there more changes coming, or were there some repairs that needed <coughs> to be made? Well, on the other side of the pond, uh, we have had some drainage issues, and uh, one of the old pipes that feeds out onto Perryville Road. Uh, if you notice that um, uh, tends to flood on heavy rain. Mm -hmm. So um, from that pond, uh, they replaced our Public Works Department stormwater, replaced that pipe that goes through that section of the park. Okay, so that'll prevent some of that muddy overflow well, that we so. have in the rainy. And right now, it's pretty. Oh, uh, right now it's rainy probably wet. <laughs> yeah. Well, so exciting with all of the changes at Kapaha, the beautification, the new pavilion that's yeah. out there. You all must be really looking forward to this coming summer. It's always fun and crazy about this time because all of our staff work so hard to get our facilities ready. You know, Cape Splash last year, we were really um, starting to celebrate being able to open up the new speed slide. That didn't get open though until I think right around the beginning of July. So we're looking forward to a full season at Cape Splash as well. Oh, that's very We're just exciting. hoping the weather is good this yes, year. Yes, a good summer, a good yes. sunny summer. Yes. Well, thanks again, Julia. Thank you, Audra. Parks and Recreation Director, Julia Thompson, for sharing yeah. with us today. After the break, we'll hear from Brendan Newburn and hear some insider information about Cape Girardeau's Visitors Bureau. That's next up on Cape Chronicle. At Southeast Missouri State University, you're here for more than a degree. You're here to do whatever it takes. We don't just learn from textbooks. We learn from each other. That's why we tackle our challenges, fuel innovation, and never settle. We're giving you the tools to learn, to lead, to grow, to do. This is the moment I knew his future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Everybody has a dream.
Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. This is Cape Chronicle and I'm Audra Kane. We're joined now with the new Executive Director of Cape Girardeau's Visitors Bureau, Brenda Newburn. Welcome, Brenda. Thank you for having me, Audra. Oh, it's so nice to see you. Now, you and I have known each other for a while, but was very excited to learn that you would be coming on board with the CVB. How long have you been in your new position? About a month and a half. And <laughs> how excited are you about it's it? Excited. Uh, well, so tell me how the experience has been so far. It's only been a month and a half, but what have you learned? What have you been doing? Well, uh, learning a lot and exciting about because in this position you have to look towards the future. Uh, I've been to Capital Days, so learned about the legislature and how that impacts our tourism budgets and things like that. So uh, then you've got your advertising, you've got just everything, the new events, all kinds of things going on. Well, let's backtrack just a little okay. bit. Where did you come from before this position? Where were you working before, and how did you end up here? Okay, I was actually working for the Holiday Inn Mid-America Hotels, Holiday Inn Hampton, and the Auburn Place as the sales manager. So um, the thing is that when you're in that position, you're also working with the, the Tourism and the Convention and Visitors Bureau all the years that I've worked at the Holiday Inn. So it's been like 13 years going on 14 that I had been in a position where I'm working with them all the time as uh, you know just complimentary because if they have groups come in I'm taking care of them so you know along with the other hotels so it's just a natural progression but that's where I'd been before and what's really funny is previously I had worked at the CVB as a sales manager back in 19 98. Really? <laughs> so it's almost like you've so come full, full circle. I oh, always tell exciting. them I'm back home. <laughs> oh, that's exciting. How neat for you. Well, uh, so um, let's see. I was I was trying to think of something. I know what it was. The challenges. Have you have you seen any challenges that the Visitors Bureau has going on now or coming in the future that you feel like you're you're going to have to face that that need to be remedied? I think a big challenge is making people know we're there. Oh, yes. I think it's very, I, I think it's easy when you're in a, a town our size that people lose sight of you. And so one of the big challenges that, that I see right now on is to let people know and make them aware that we're there and what kind of services we can provide and what we have to offer um, and how we can help to support any other tourism effort that someone else is trying to accomplish. So that is one key thing well, for me. Uh, so on that vein, what services does the Visitors Bureau provide? If you're bringing a group in, we can offer them tours, uh, step on guide tours if it's a motor coach group. We offer welcome bags. We offer gift baskets for your clients that you want to impress and make them feel like they're really special when they show up at your hotel room. So there's lots of little things that we can offer that I don't think get used very often that are kind of, you know, people don't even think about it. They'll go out and try to do it, but we can do it and we can do it with local things and at the same time, give them things that'll keep them in our town a little longer. Oh, that's <laughs> neat. Well, and I know that in the past, the Visitors Bureau worked heavily when, when theater companies, movie companies came in to film, like with Gone Girl. Exactly. And they were, they were crucial in, in inviting them here and then getting them to stay a little bit longer. So the Visitors Bureau has been doing its job and you'll be kind of primed to continue to do that. So what does the future of Visitors marketing look like for you? Do you Have you had some ideas that have already come to you? Oh yes. The future is going to be digital oh. along with the print copy. You kind of stay in that vein but you can really see that digital is where it's at. I mean people are on their phones, on their laptops. That's I mean they are using that market. You're in your car, you're driving and all of a sudden you want to pull off the highway. It's there. We've got to be able to be in their in their face and on their minds. In the moment. In the yeah. moment. In the moment. <laughs> uh, that's one of the things that we've discussed in our home. Even is that 
uh, having your phone or your tablet, because I've got my <laughs> tablet with me all the time, right. um, having it with you and being able to ex access what's going on. And so are you all going to, to really work with your digital team? Because I'm guessing you have a digital team. I don't know. Oh. But really <laughs> m on marketing the city and getting, mm -hmm. uh, when you go to do a Google search, that the Visitors Bureau comes up and, and informs right. people of what's going on. We don't have a digital team. <laughs> that would be wonderful. <laughs> But we do have PR people. I have uh, um, Stacy, Stacy mm -hmm. Donahue Lane. She's the PR person, and we work close together. But you know, when you get into that market, you have those support bases that will help you with that. You know, we'll go as far as our expertise can take us, and then we can reach them to help us develop it even more so. But it's just knowing that you want to do that, so that when you get out there and start your marketing and your advertising, that that's where you know you start looking to put put the dollars. Well, and I'm sure that you're hoping with even with this conversation mm -hmm. to to get the word out to local businesses that when you put your information online, be sure and link to the Visitors Bureau. Exactly. And and how can they reach you in order to do that, to connect with you? Actually, if they go to visitcape.com, they can check right there on a contact number, but our phone number's 573-335-1631 and my email is bnewburn at visitkate.com. Well, Brenda, I'm so excited because I tell people all the time that you have the happiest face <laughs> and you're such a great ambassador for our city because you're always joyful, always. Mm -hmm. What makes you that way? Spirit. Spirit. Thanks. Well, that doesn't surprise <laughs> me about you at all. Well, we've been visiting with Executive Director of Cape Girardeau's Visitors Bureau. Brenda, it's so nice to see you. Thank you for coming to chat with us. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us today for Cape Chronicle. The program is a collaboration between the Department of Mass Media at Southeast Missouri State University, the City of Cape Girardeau, and River Radio Group, comprised of 93.9 The River, K103, KZIM, KSIM, Real Rock 99.3, and SEMO ESPN. Our executive producer is Dr. Jim Dufek. I'm Audra Kane. Thanks for watching.